Manor Lords is a city builder simulator, and wait, don't go, look, while it might not appear like the kind of game that can be cosy as there are bandits roaming the wilds and the ever constant threat of battle against your regional rivals, I've been playing Manor Lords on peaceful difficulty and would like to propose to you that Manor Lords is a cosy game. Just hear me out. I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and these are the reasons why those of us who love cosy games like Cult of the Lamb should think about picking up Manor Lords in early access. Describing Manor Lords as a city builder is a massive oversimplification. It's much more than just putting buildings down and making those good numbers go up. Over the seasons, you can transform a bundle of tents to a thriving village organically, from putting winding roads through the houses and workshops to planning out which of your fields are going to be fallow from year to year. In Peaceful Difficulty, Manor Lords really is a medieval, slow-living, cosy game. As strange as it may be, the closest feeling I've come to in terms of how it feels to play Manor Lords, minus the roguelike combat cycle of course, is Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb is a sneaky city builder disguised with adorable critters and demonic pacts. Step back and look at how you set up a food supply to building hospitals to managing the mood of your flock in it. Manor Lords has a different wrapper and much more detailed elements, but if you liked Cult of the Lamb, there's a chance Manor Lords could be your preferred kind of video game flavour as well. Manor Lords has you building up a cluster of tents into a village and then a town, pulsing with agriculture, trade and artisan pursuits. Instead of managing individuals, you're managing families and assigning them various duties to build up your repertoire of resources to feed back into the happiness of those families. Although it might be technically correct, resource management just sounds so boring, so I beg of you, try not to think of it like that. Making your villagers happy, of course, includes making sure that they are fed, sheltered, and have some kind of pursuit to occupy their days, and yeah, that pursuit does end up benefiting you, but it also involves building a tavern, because of course it does. But to build a tavern, you need barley, and now I get to talk to you about Manor Lord's farming, which you can manage from the cosy safety of your chosen gaming lair or sofa, while you send your villagers out into the biting cold of winter or blazing heat of summer. Look at the fertility of the soil your settlement is near, decide which crop you want to plant first, and if you want to help out your villagers, you can upgrade the farm to give them an ox to help plough the field. And a small detail that I love is that every single animal you buy already has a name, which just adds something to the game in my opinion. Once you've had the one rotation of crops, you should really switch out to another or get yourself some fencing to turn the field into a fallow pasture for a year, where you can raise sheep whose stuff will fertilise the field ready for the next year's crops. Treat the land like some kind of sterile manufactured asset and plant the same crop each year and you'll find that the soil's fertility will plummet, just like in real life. In Manor Lords, you cannot bend the land to your will. You have to work with the land, the soil, the wildlife, or your village will suffer. Perhaps an orchard is more your type of thing, or an apiary. Both take a couple of years to get up to full production, so just like the fertility of your fields, you need to be patient. Whether your families are farmers, apiarists, tanners, hunters, or foragers, they will all gather around the marketplace and erect their personal stalls independently to sell their wares to the other families in the village. You don't really need to manage the market stalls at all, you just build a marketplace and then let them do their thing, but there's something so satisfying about seeing these families build up their stalls and start to sell their surplus stuff to other people in the village, thereby helping the village as a whole, really. The way Living Quarters works in Manor Lords is a bit different from other games like Cult of the Lamb as well. The families are attracted to your settlement by you building burgages, a medieval type of housing, which can then be extended to either accommodate another family or give those who live there something like a chicken coop. As your settlement becomes more prosperous, you can upgrade these burgages and start to tax those who are bustling around the streets, 
tanning leather and running their market stalls, which goes directly into your own coffers. There's something incredibly satisfying about building up a small house into a kind of mini manor of its own with a chicken coop and much more going on in its backyard just to then see the people who live in it go off to the marketplace and sell their surplus eggs and stuff. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Thoughtless expansion is punished in manor lords. Cut too much timber without having a forester's lodge nearby to replant trees will put you at risk of deforestation. While early in the game, hunting will be the lifeline of your settlement, herds of deer will start to flee further afield if you overhunt an area or build a large, unchecked town. Nature responds to and reflects your choices in Manor Lords. If that stresses you out, then rest assured that you can take things as slowly as you want. There are pause and fast forward mechanics to make the days pass in seconds, or if you need more time to think about what to do next, you can just pause these medieval lives to have a look around the region and plan your next move. Like Cult of the Lamb, Manor Lords is more about management than doing these tasks yourself, like in a game like Stardew Valley. However, if you find yourself feeling too divorced from the goings on in your settlement and amongst your families, of course, you can go into third person mode and walk around your village. At the moment, this feature is in its early stages, but it's still stellar. The behavior of each folk is way more detailed than in other city builders or even something like Cult of the Lamb. Tanners, woodcutters and hunters, for example, all have their own routines which you can follow with micromanaging detail to have some downtime from overseeing omnisciently and omnipresently from above. One of the few things I found lacking when walking around in third person was that I do wish there were more miscellaneous items I could decorate my village with. Flowers, maypoles and the like. At this point though, those aren't actual problems I have with Manor Lords. It's an early access and decorative options are doubtless going to expand in the future. When your town starts to flourish, you can open up trade routes, connecting your settlement to a main road as you tentatively start to build relationships with other regions. Exporting the fruits of your labour, well, your folks' labour, means you can import precious items from other regions that you're lacking in. So, if you find yourself missing a clay deposit, you can just import that in from somewhere else. Farming, trading and living is quite a lot to manage, the latter in real life as well, and you can rule with an iron fist if you deem it necessary. For the greater good, of course. Enacting policies, like doctrines in Cult of the Lamb, will issue rules your villagers have to abide by, such as strict fasting. That has people skip every fifth meal, which reduces food consumption, so it's good in the winter when nothing is growing and you have to rely on stockpiled food, but also reduces your villagers' opinion of you. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, my friend. What makes Manor Lords even cosier is that it's fully playable on Steam Deck. Your settings don't need to be super low. I had mine on 30 FPS with most of the graphics on low and it ran fine, so I could play it on my sofa with some candles going, which just added to the being in my medieval stone tower wrapped in blankets while a storm rages outside ambience. Manor Lords is by no means bare bones at the moment, and yet it's technically in early access, and if this is the game when it's unfinished, I cannot wait for the full release. Honestly, I'd recommend picking it up now before it presumably goes up in price when it gets released in full. It's made by one person, so that probably won't be for a while, but in the meantime, I'm happy to nurture my village. And that is my argument slash thesis as to why Manor Lords is a cosy game and can be treated as such, especially if you bypass the combat and just focus on creating a thriving, cosy medieval village with chicken coops, apiaries and crop rotation. Which is way more enjoyable to do than it sounds. So, what do you think of Manor Lords so far? Let me know and join me in waiting eagerly for future updates to the game because you could 100% gaslight me into believing this is a full release. Thanks so much for choosing to spend your time with me and now I am going to go and return to my medieval tower to manage my village. See you folks next time.